video I'm going to be looking at using an oil that I've never used before but was quite intrigued about. With the prices of oils going up, uh, this for me was a kind of, of decision to, to see if I could uh, find a cheap way of soaping but still get the same consistency of soap that I, I, I'm, I'm used to working with. And because I use both olive oil and rapeseed in my soaps uh, quite regularly, I've decided that I was going to try this. Now this is an olive oil pomace and rapeseed blend. Um, whereas kind of olive oils are now retailing at anywhere from four to seven pounds a litre, this one comes in at between three and five pounds a litre. So it's a little bit more affordable, but it does mean you have to work out the maths behind it, which means that for the proportion of olive oil and rapeseed you're going to have in your uh, soap, you need to understand the proportions of that and divide it by, I'm looking at the back here, olive oil pomace is 52% and rapeseed oil is 48%. So you'd need to uh, adjust both of those for this. Now there are a few other ingredients in here, um, but it's less than 0.01% and I'm hoping it's not going to make too much of a difference to how this reacts. But come along with me and we'll see how this actually does when I soap with it. So you can see here that I've got my oils together. Now this is includes the rapeseed and the olive oil, which I've used that the percentages in it to work out my um, my recipe. And then I've got my lye solution here on the left hand side of the screen, ready to go into it. So we're just going to basically make this up. Now I am soaping cool, but I always soap cool and I've made sure that my lye and my oils are within 10 degrees of one another. So we'll pop the lye into the oils here and I'm pouring it down my spatula in order to reduce the amount of air that I'm incorporating into it because we obviously don't want to have too much air within our soap. And then once we get all of that in there, I'm going to give it a quick stir just to start that emulsification process. And then we'll go in there with our stick blender to really make sure that we get to an emulsion. I want to get to just an emulsion with this because I want to see how much work time I have with a pomace olive oil versus a standard one. Now I know the standard one and this particular recipe, I get a relatively good amount of time to do some swirls and I'm being very ambitious with this using six colours in a swirl. Um, but again, we'll work with the oil that we have and we see what we get at the end of it. So looking here, this is coming to emulsion really nicely. I'm getting no worrisome effects happening within this one. Um, and the stick blender you can see here is actually an Aldi one. It's a really good one, although I find it a little bit too powerful sometimes. So we've brought that to an emulsion and everything's looking really nicely here. So we're going to start separating this out into our six colours. And the six colours I'm using are a fluorescent yellow, a fluorescent red, a kind of clementine orange, a purple passion, electric blue and a lake green. So those are the colours I'm using and they were from a supplier which is no longer um, trading in the UK. So unfortunately you can't get these colours from them anymore but there are plenty of other mica suppliers out there. So if you notice there, I just looked at my bell of my stick blender and we're getting a little bit of separation. So I do need to go back in and give this another little kind of stick blend for about two or three seconds just to bring that emulsion back. So I go away and I do a little something. I check my stick blender and make sure that I've got that emulsion happening. I can always go back in and I can add and I can process my soap a little bit longer. But if I over process it and I go beyond my emulsion, it's very difficult to then come back from that. And because this is using a pomace olive oil, and I've never used pomace before, I'm being very careful with it just to make sure that I reach that emulsion, but I don't go beyond it. So hopefully now we've got to that emulsion point and we're going to now start separating that out into our uh, six colours that you can see in front of us here. Now I do only want a very small amount of these particular soaps um, colours within my main soap batch. So I'm, I am pouring a very, very small amount of these soaps I'm only making five or six bars here as a test of this, this, this oil, so I don't really want to kind of overdo the amount of colours we're going for. So you can just see that as a rule, just kind of touch in there. All of the colours have been pre-dispersed in oil from the batch, so that oil is going to get saponified in the rest of it. So we've got the right amount of oils, and because I find if you overdo the oils in little batches like this, you can end up with too much oil. Um, above your super fat and then things just kind of go a little bit awry. So whenever I do little bits of oil um, colour like this, I use oil from the batch. And I'm using a mini mixer here just to get these um, really mixed in well because they're such small amounts. Um, I do just use this little mixer here and I'm using little silicone um, pots here which are usually used for resin pouring but I find them really quite handy when it comes to making uh, little batches of soap and I tend to go in order 
so that I don't have to clean it off every single time. And as you can see there, we're just going through the colors because each of the previous color will make the next color. It works quite nicely. So the rest of the soap is going to be titanium dioxide or TD. And the thing with titanium dioxide is because it's a clay, essentially, it's a natural product. It can absorb some of the oil and the water that you're using and therefore it can accelerate trace. So I do premix my titanium dioxide in a mixture of water and glycerin, um, vegetable glycerin, just to give it a little bit more of a dispersal um, availability. And then what I'll do is I'll add my titanium dioxide to a small pot first, then pour in a little bit of my um, batter, as you can see here. And then what I'll do is I'll actually then mix that batter with the titanium dioxide. I call this my kind of sacrificial batter. And by doing it this way, it means I'm not stirring that um, all of that batter up to try and disperse all of that titanium dioxide. I can get a better dispersal in the small amount of batter, pour that into my main batch and then stir it through. So I'm not kind of speeding up the trace of all of the batter. There's just a small amount of batter that's been really kind of well worked to disperse that titanium dioxide. And then I can go forward and add it into the bowl and then stir that through with the spatula, therefore keeping my trace a little bit kind of softer and a little bit longer than it would be if I just tried to stick blend that through. What I'm going to do with this batter is actually pop it into some um, squeeze bottles. Now these squeeze bottles are uh, standard ones that you get from Amazon or somewhere like that. But what it's going to allow me to do is just really place the batter where I want it in and amongst the colours that I'm using. And that will then allow me to have a better control of where that white goes. I can put it in a thinner layer and I can make sure that those colours really stay separated so we don't get too much muddiness going through the design. So what we're going to do is any of that leftover batter is going to go into the bottom of the mould along with a touch more just to kind of build up a little bit of depth in the bottom. And I'm going to take each of the colours individually and just pour it through the centre of the um, batter then build up a little bit of uh, the white on the top of that and build up the colours and then go through with just a very simple chopstick swirl to just show you how all of those colours will kind of swirl together and just bring this really beautiful design together. So uh, out of sequence, we're going to start with a little bit of the orange. And as you can see here, these uh, little kind of silicone um, pots are brilliant because you can really squeeze them in and you can control the amount of batter that you're pouring out of them in very small amounts. And I really like these. And then what I do with the squeeze bottle here is just come back in and then use that to do a very fine line of batter over the top of this. So essentially what I'm trying to do is just lay the batter on the top of it without really making too much of an inroads into sinking it or moving that batter around. I'm going to pile each of those batters one on top of the other and then use the white batter in between to create that kind of separation between them. So once the orange has been kind of laid down and we've got enough of that white over the top, so that's made it disappear essentially, and we've got a nice clean um, canvas to work on, we'll then lay down the next colour and do exactly the same pattern over and over again. And rather than you watching that happen six times, we'll just go with the colours that we're going to do on each each one of these motions. As you can see here, I'm just going backwards and forwards with that white batter and just really kind of filling in that colour. Pretty much gone there. So we're going to go in with our red. And again, we're just laying that in very carefully, very gently uh, on the surface. And because we can get quite close with these, uh, we're not dropping through and it's just going to stay in that kind of very little area and give us some really nice wispy swirls when we come to it. So we get the red one in like that and we'll come back in in a second with our white batter and do exactly the same thing to cover that over. Okay, and this is just really a matter of building each of these layers up in a small mould like this. If you've got a larger mould, you can obviously do this a little bit quicker. So once we've covered our red over, we're going to go into our purple. And again, what you want to try and do is lay colours in the order that they appear in the colour wheel. Um, and they can go in a circle, so essentially you're not going to be muddying the colours up. So as long as you go from, say, yellow to orange, orange to red, red into purple, purple into blue, blue into green, green into yellow, you'll never really get that muddiness. What you want to try and avoid are mixing two colours next to each other that are um, essentially opposites on the colour wheel. So for example, if you had a red and you then go and try and mix that with a green, you're mixing red, blue and yellow together and that's always going to give you a brown. Now there's a little trick here. If you want to shake your bottle of um, batter and you don't want it to spill anywhere, if you give the bottle a quick squeeze first, then put your finger over the edge and shake it. When you release your finger, it'll suck 
the batter back in and you won't spray it everywhere. So that's a quick tip for when you're shaking batter in one of these squeeze bottles. So our next colour to lay down is going to be this beautiful, really vibrant electric blue. Works really nicely with this um, purple and it also sits really nicely with the green that's coming next. Um, it's one of my favourite go-to blues. Absolutely wonderful colour. Um, it's kind of on the metallic side, it's on that kind of neon side and you can always dull it down but you can't brighten those back up again. So we're going to go in with our green now and this is a this is called a lake green and it's absolutely now don't confuse the color lake with a lake color um the name of this is lake um and it's just a kind of really foresty rich green um that's going to sit nice between that electric blue and the uh, yellow without kind of moving into that tealy color so i really enjoy this one beautiful color to work with and then we're going to get this one covered over very quickly and our final colour that we're going to go in with is our yellow and this is a fluorescent yellow and I do like to work with fluorescent yellows because they seem to come through in the final soap without kind of being again being dulled down a lot of yellows you'll lose in batters um, and I'd much rather keep that real vibrancy of a yellow in this particular design and we get this last kind of colour covered over here and uh, going to put a decent amount on the top here before we then come in with our uh, Chopstick swirl. Now, this is how you do a chopstick swirl. It's really simple, really easy. You go into your soap, you make a swirl in one direction like this. You're then going to flick the chopstick back over and make a swirling in the opposite direction. Now, you can do this once, twice, three times, four times, but again, we've got so many colours going on in here. I don't want to overmix this. And again, looking from the top down onto this um, swirl, you just pop your chopstick in and you give it these kind of round, circular swirl motions to get all of those colors kind of distributing. I've done twice because I don't want to, to get these colors really mixing and getting that brown color happening out of it. And then once you're happy with that, just pull it out of the uh, mold and we're gonna finish the top of this one with all of the colors together in a particular order, which means you're not getting those kind of brown colors sitting next to each other um, and you'll get a beautiful swirl. I'm just gonna do a really simple kind of uh, linear swirl with a little bit of, um, uh, flicks here and there to make it look really beautiful and as you can see I'm again laying these colors down in the right order so the purple will sit next to the blue and the red the blue will have the purple and the green next to it and the red will have obviously the orange and the yellow and we'll move it outwards so that all of those colors sit together in the right color groups and we're not potentially going to get muddy colors on the top of this we've got such vibrant colors happening we don't want those colors to be muddied and darkened down through a brown we want to keep all of that really beautiful color happening all the way through this fantastic soap and what we'll do is we'll speed through the laying down of the rest of the colors in here and we'll get through to just doing the design on the top of this soap in a second and because these colors are laying the length of the mold we're going to start by going up and down the short way of the mold just pulling those colors through one another and creating this kind of linear swirl through all of those colors up and down and back and forth so you can see that's just creating this kind of chevron pattern going up and down through like that and then when we get to this end we're going to start doing the same motion but in the length of the mold and this will give us a kind of really nice swirled top and you can stop there but what i am going to do is i'm going to do a kind of third pass which is just some very random movements to get this kind of real kind of interesting swirl on the top of the soap you can do as much or as little of this as you want. It's entirely up to you. Um, but like all soapers, you have to know when to stop. And sometimes we don't really know when we uh, should stop swirling the tops of soaps. But I think we're good there. And we'll probably leave that one there and come back for the cut. So here we have our pomace olive oil um, soap with rapeseed, coconut and palm. Um, so let's just get rid of that one there so set up really nicely seems to be beautifully uh, set up so there we go that's released into there hopefully now we can just slide that out So it's got some nice crisp corners, looking pretty good there. So this is one where we laid the colours into the middle in the various uh, 
colour profiles that we've got and um, we'll give it a cut and see what we get at the end of it. So let's get our cutter in here and see what's inside here. So it's a, quite a soft bar so this will need a little bit of a cure and that it's our inside. Look at that. Looking good. Lots of colours going on inside there. Let's uh, cut a few more and see what else we get in here. So I think that's a really fun bar, a really bright, vibrant, easy way of making a soap. We can make lots of pretty swirls, quite feathery, all sorts of interest going in there. Um, and that's just using the olive oil pomace blend. Uh, didn't find it, it actually sped trace up significantly. I don't think it actually um, did anything untowards in that batch of soap at all. I could control trace. I could make sure that it was staying nice and liquid. So, so there we have it. There is our olive oil pomace blend soap. We've got some really nice striations going through there. You can see all the colours have kind of just been swirled around. That will change as you use the soap. It needs a good cure, but I'm quite pleased with that soap. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and allows me to make more videos and tutorials for all of you. When you subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon if you'd like to get notified when a new video is uploaded. And thanks a lot, Soapsters. I'll see you again next time.